So, first of all, good afternoon to you all, um, and thank you for this wonderful opportunity. My name is Saurabh Sachdev. Uh, I'm an architect and a lighting designer by profession. I am currently finishing my PhD from the University of Stuttgart, and I've been lucky enough to work on this dynamic light research project under Professor Romhild. So today I'll be talking about the user expectation appraisal. Let's see. So these are the uh, topics that I'll be dealing in my topic today, in my presentation today. I'll be giving, I'll be talking about very briefly about the work packages and a few words about the work package one and then mainly about the needs, demands, and expectations, uh, tools, for, tools for appraisal, etc. cetera. Um, can I just get one second, please? I'm just making sure it's the, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure it's okay. So um, as Professor Rummel had talked about uh, in his presentation in the morning, um, the Dynamic Light Research Project is made up of four different work packages or components, and each, de each deals with various as different aspects of public lighting, for example, with uh, design, master planning, GIS, pilot actions, and legal aspects, et cetera. Et cetera. <clears throat> I will be, however, talking or mainly, dis mainly focusing on, one, on work package one, which deals with the social and human aspect of public lighting. And us basically aims at finding how we can make through, pu through public lighting, through dynamic public lighting, more livable cities. So what we found out, uh, in order to, to do this, we first need to understand what are public spaces. Uh, we went through a lot of research works, urban design theories, and we, what we found out that cities are a complex network of different political, social, and economical environments. They are a mixing pot of different cultures, religions, races, people, classes. Um, and the public lighting, therefore, needs to not only to cater to these different individuals and groups, but also needs to assist or help these in, interact, uh, help these groups interact and develop. What this means is that basically the main goal of any public lighting is to ensure the satisfaction of the various, ne various uh, user needs. Hence, knowing and understanding people's needs and preferences is key to a successful public lighting strategy. I was lucky enough to attend a lecture from Professor Jan Gale uh, last year in Frankfurt, and he started his lecture with a similar picture, and he went on to talk about that we as architects, urban designers, lighting, lighting designers, we understand human uh, user needs and demands. After all, we use public spaces. We, knew, we, we know what, what happens in public spaces. Okay. But still, we end up designing and building spaces which do, which do not really conform to the expectations. So this made us realize that how important it is to find out about the needs, demands, and aspirations. So for the sake of our research, as well as the project, we, we went on to describe for the project, for the uh, research project, user demands and social needs. So what we, from, through research, through uh, finding out from different theories, we found out that user demands can be understood as a multi-dimensional approach, evolving physiological, psychological, and security needs they are basically the individual fundamental human needs. On the other hand, social needs can be described as desires, or expectations, or even aspirations for improvement in public spaces, uh, in, in, the urban, in urban fabric. So these social um, needs can then, uh, on the other hand, can invo involve or encompass psychological and symbolic perceptions, making them very difficult to uh, describe or quantify. We then looked at what can be done to, how can we find out, find out about these demands and needs. Uh, we, we looked again, uh, we went, took inspiration again from uh, Mr. Yang um, uh, Yale. Um, if, and a uh, recommendation, if you haven't been to his website, you should look, check out the Gale Institute, it has a lot of good references and tools. So it, it talks about having uh, individual surveys or gathering information at a local level. It talks about having group surveys or observation analysis, I think, my predecessor was talking a little bit about that. And today, with the new media technology, we have social media, we have big data analysis, real-time analysis, we can gather information through all these sources. What we did next was then took all this information and created a couple of tools, the mainly joint monitoring and demand analysis. We have also created a couple of manuals, both social and technical, and currently we are writing up the dynamic lighting design strategies. I'll briefly describe them. So, 
Um, I'll go into detail in, the, in, the, in these two topics first. Um, they are the joint monitoring and demand analysis. Both of these tools were uh, basically designed to investigate the potential for dynamic light based on user needs and demands. So a joint monitoring tool can be seen more as a collecting and organizing data, whereas demand analysis can be seen as more as interpreting the data. I'll explain what, what that means. So joint monitoring tool is nothing but a tool, again, to do a demand analysis. It encompasses, uh, it consists of six different themes, uh, area functionality, stakeholders, build environment, time of use, number of users, and lighting analysis. I'll uh, briefly describe them here. So starting with the area functionality, what do we understand by that? We all, and we all know that public spaces are meant for walking, cycling, shopping, meeting, discussing with people, moving. And each and every of this activity has its own lighting requirements. For example, walking needs good orientation, wayfinding. On the other hand, shopping requires good color rendering, property, and uh, an inviting environment. So you see, each and every activity has its own lighting requirement. And if we can understand these activities, we can then differentiate between the different lighting requirements or group the different lighting activities together. Similarly, I, I, I'm repeating myself. Uh, that pri the primary objective of any lighting strategy is to fulfill the requirements of the users. And only through the integration of users and stakeholders in a, in a public lighting strategy can we ensure that the context and the users of the space are taken care of. So if we understand who are the stakeholders and the users, we can have tailor-made lighting requirements. We can establish uh, particular specific requirements for each individual, or we can combine lighting requirements if you see certain individual groups or certain user groups have similar requirements. Going on, we have the built environment. Light is reflected by the architecture in the built environment. Light makes the urban fabric, spaces, walkways, etc., visible. And through this, if we understand the scale proportion, we can, we can see how light reacts with different scales of spaces, proportions of spaces, materials in the urban en environment. And we can respond to that. We can create a better lighting situation. Some examples. Um, then, then uh, coming to the time of use, the biggest potential what is of dynamic light is to understand that not all activities are taking all the time. So, if uh, as you see, uh, this can be even time of day or time of say dark hours, but it can also be time of month, time of year, or seasonal variations or weather, even weather variations. And if you can understand these, what what happens when it starts to rain, say in public space? Do people use it? Do we need the same amount of light when it's raining or snowing? Or do we need more lights, for example, when it's a festival? For example, if you, if you can understand these things, we can better respond to the requirements to the user. Then, coming to the number and frequency of use. Again, all people do not use all the public spaces all the time. And today, with CCTV, with real time, with social media, it's so easy to find out when people, are use, when people are using which space at what time and how many, how many people are using that. And last but not the least about the lighting analysis survey that we need to find out does the existing lighting provide or is sufficient for the users, for the functions, for the stakeholders so that we can propose better solutions. So what we did was we created this, these tools, and then in order to test the robustness of these tools, we provided, we, we designed, the, we gave the students here in Wisma a design project. They had to come up with a lighting design for a, a lighting design proposal for, a, for an area nearby Wisma, and they were asked to use the tools that we had created. Um, and through their feedback and their um, Sorry, the feedbacks and the experiences, we could fine tune and refine these tools. Um, these are some of the examples from their work, how they were analyzing and looking at the different uh, situations. In the end, what we then finally, through, uh, through in the joint monitoring tool and the demand analysis, you will see, we created flexible and easily modifiable two tables and checklists. Uh, these checklists are designed for architects, for designers, for municipalities, or even ordinary citizens and it can provide information about the area that you would like to study. Furthermore, you can always add information, additional information to these checklists. So what do we do when we have all this information? The idea, you have not collected all this information. The idea is that we are start, start to identify the problems. For example, that people probably they cannot find their way, or there are frequent accidents, or there's a fear of crime. 
then we start looking at what are the lighting specific lighting requirements. So does this mean that we need to provide, we need to identify critical pathways? Do we need to identify conflict zones? Or do we need to also provide some mere facial recognition? And through this, we can then start proposing through dynamic lighting, for example, saying we can illuminate certain pathways at certain times when they're used. When, for example, kids are coming back in, the, in winter time. Or we can have higher or uniform illumination in the conflict zone where we know, when we know there's a, there's a lot of rush hour. And similarly, we can provide more semi, semi-cylindrical and may, better color rendering during, say, shopping hours. And this is basically, sorry, I'll go back one. This is what we mean by demand analysis. So you have a tool which identifies the problems, which asks you who are the users, what time, when, when are they used, what, how, what sort of users. And then you, can't, you start identifying the problems and looking at the specific lighting requirements. This is what is meant by the demand analysis tool. Again, some examples from the uh, small example from the project, from students' project work. Now, through all this, what we realize, also working with the students, is that uh, this dynamic light is more complex than static light, as Professor Romil also pointed this out. We need to understand what are the activities taking place, who are the users, what are their expectations, then the urban fabric, sp the scales, proportions, time of users, number and frequency, etc. And to assure, and so, if he, if he can find out all about this, only through, after this, we can make a, create a good dynamic lighting proposal. Um, what we have done in, as part of our research project is, again, Professor Roman mentioned this, we have created uh, these two tools. Um, you're more than welcome to comment on this and give your feedbacks. Um, we have the joint monitoring tool and the demand analysis, which contain all the things that I've talked about. We also have the social and the technical manuals, and uh, we will soon be finishing the design strategy. So with that, I will finish. I hope I was in time. Thank you very much.